Hey Ligar Nation! This is part one of two videos that show you how you can make this beautiful USA flag using Ligari's flag stencil. We start with a hollow core door and end with this. If you love this project, this is something you can do too. Head over to our website and get your stencil and epoxy today. All right, so before we start priming, I'm gonna show you a cool little Ligari tip. What I have here is a large lint roller. You guys can get these at Target, Amazon. It's a Scotch-Brite lint roller, and it's just like a paint roller, except there's a lint roller on it. And what we do is we just run over our projects, your boards, whatever you're coating, and run this thing on it, and it's gonna get all the loose sawdust, any roller hairs, lint hairs from when you cleaned it with a rag and it's just really simple. Brand new, they're really sticky, so you gotta kinda fine tune them real quick. And then they'll start to roll. And then I'll pull this off and show you what we got on here. Put it up on the wall here so you can see. So brand new lint roller section. And then it, this is the spot that we just rolled. So we obviously got some sawdust stuff, some little fibers from the rag that we used to clean the board. So this is even after cleaning it with the rag and some denatured alcohol, you're always gonna have stuff left. So it's an awesome little technique to use. And it works great when you're doing your final top coats as well. So if you had to sand or you're getting ready to do your final top coat, run over your project with one of those lint rollers, and then do your flood coat of epoxy or your urethane top coat. So we're getting ready to make a custom flag. We gave away a certificate um, at a veteran's auction for a custom built flag. So I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna be making that now for them. We're gonna be doing titanium base, and then we're gonna be doing a wood grain effect using silver and black Ligari effects. And for these flag kits, to make a flag on a 36 by 80 um, hollow core door, or say you're doing it on MDF board, as long as it's 36 by 80 inches, you guys will be able to use our flag stencils and we need a gallon and a half of resin. So we're gonna use a gallon and a half to do the, the, the metallic design on it. And then we're gonna use a gallon and a half after we ghost this flag um, decal on there with the spray paint. We'll do the other half of that gallon and a half, three quarts to flood coat it, lock everything in. Um, so this is a pretty simple process. This is basically all we need. This has been primed already. Um, just make sure you guys are going over your primer within that two hour window. You don't want to wait longer than two hours. So this was primed about, about an hour ago, it's still tacky. And that's what we want. We want to go over it tacky. So I de-shedded the roller. I used the lint roller, ran the lint roller on this, got all the loose fibers off of this roller. And now we're just going to break this gallon and a half kit in half, which would be three quarts. So we're going to go two quarts part A and then we're gonna add one core to part B. You always wanna stop, let it level out. Takes it a second to level out, especially when it's cold. That way we're not going over our line. All right, so I'm gonna mix this up for two, two minutes, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, add the metallics, we're doing the titanium. Mix that in and then we're gonna spread that out I'll over the whole board, get the base coat down, and then we'll add the Ligari effects and do the wood grain uh, technique on it.
resin's mixed, ready to go. We want to get this out of the bucket as soon as we can, but I want to show you a cool Ligari tip to keep your paddle mixers clean without epoxy building up, because what happens is you let this get hard, you start breaking it off, then it becomes brittle. If you use it to mix another uh, batch of resin, sometimes chunks will fall off. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. So the easiest way to keep them clean is have a bucket full of denatured alcohol, and then it's nice to have a lid on them where you can kind of lid it up and then mark it, label it denatured, and then that can be your clean out. So what I do is I get done mixing. I've got a garbage box here. I want to spin it fast, get most of it off that we can. Put it on the low setting because you don't want to splash this stuff around. And then I'll go back and forth. And then we just usually have to wipe off the, the metal part, but then we have a nice clean mixer to use next time. All right guys, so it's base, base coat time. So I'm gonna dump this down the middle and then we're gonna spread it out with that roller. Now all I have to do is just cross roll. Now a tip for you guys, when you're starting out your roller, never start it out somewhere where the resin's thin, because what's gonna happen is, hear that, it gets real sticky. That's what's gonna pull hairs off of it. So if you start out first, get this roller soaked up in resin, and then when I spread it, it's not gonna get sticky and pull hairs. So always, always start out, get that roller soaked up good before you kind of start thinning it out. Now the easiest way to test if it's kind of leveled or spread out good, just let that roller glide. Don't apply any pressure. You can kind of see the pattern it leaves. It's not pulling a bunch of product because if we had a thick spot and we were just gliding through it, hit that, it starts to push a bunch. So if you have those out there, all you do is just kind of spread those out a little better because this is a self-leveling resin, so it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why we don't use um, a lot of tools other companies are, but real simple, just nice and light. Now I know I got a good even coat. I don't have a bunch of thick spots. If you have thin spots, it's gonna sound really sticky and tacky, which we don't have those. So the top's done. Now I can hit my edges. I'll roll the top a little and then hit my edge. And I'll just continue that. Because every time I roll on the top, I get more product on my roller. And then I put that to the face or your edge. So the top's done, the sides are done. You don't want to do your design right away because this resin is going to level out. It's going to find, you're right, it's level point everywhere. If I did my design right now and maybe one spot had to move a bunch, um, that design's going to move with it. So I like to let these smaller projects set up for about 10, 15 minutes and then do the design. So we're going to let this sit, level out on its own, and then we'll come back in about 10, 15 minutes and do the Ligari effects in it. All right, guys, got the two Ligari effects. We let this level out for about 10 minutes. Um, that way it's not gonna move as much. And these effects are awesome because I can just squirt them out 
And again, we're going for a wood grain pattern. The stripes are gonna be going this way, so our wood grain's gonna follow those. And we're just gonna start putting it out here. Randomly, all over the place. You can always add more, you can't take it away. So if you want smaller amounts, start out with less. Like I said, we can always add more color. Now we're gonna do the black. And between these, Now, the silver effects and the gold effects will crust over faster. So you wanna kinda of blend those quickly. Don't try to do too big an area. We'll probably get some spots that they're gonna crust over. But instead of running my hand, I'm gonna do a squeegee. And guys, don't worry about spreading the resin away. I mean, you don't wanna spread it out too far off of the primer. But it'll still level out and, and touch again. If there's any spots that we have to hit, we can hit those again. And what I mean by that is I'm down to just primer right here. Right, we don't want to we don't want to turn this thing like really sideways and blend it and push that product really far away from each other and expose that primer layer. And I'm I'm also going very straight. All right guys, really starting to come together here. But you can see there are a lot tighter veins versus using your hand, because your hands are a lot wider. Using something skinny like this just creates a totally different look. So now I'm just gonna go through and fine tune, break up some of these spots I wanna break up. And then you can see this is almost touching. I can help that kind of level itself out. So don't worry if you have any of these spots, we'll just touch these up. They'd probably level out next 10, 10 minutes, but we'll kind of help them out. I'm gonna add a little bit more black. Some of these spots up here. So kind of even that black out. And we'll add some more silver also. Really happy with how this turned out. Now, you guys can always go and fine tune areas like any spots that maybe look like a half circle or something, simply blend it in. Like right here, it kind of just stops. Just blend that in a little more. So you can fine tune it however much you want. Um, and so I always like to like look down the side, make sure my lines are straight. I already did that. That way if you have maybe one line that kind of cr is crooked, you can kind of just straighten that out. You don't even have to do the whole board again. You would just straighten out those spots that kind of veer off on the ends. But other than that, this looks really good. So I'm just gonna go around, pad in any spots where I can see primer, which is not a lot. And then what we'll do is we'll spritz isopropyl alcohol on this. And I'll do half of it just so you guys can see the difference of what it does. Maybe you don't wanna do that. If you don't want to create those cells, um, 
you would just mist it with denatured alcohol. Misting it with denatured is not gonna make it sell out and do those cool craters that a lot of people like, some people don't. So I'll, I'll show you guys what it looks like on half of this. All right, so I'm gonna spritz isopropyl. Barely pull the trigger, we want small to medium drops. Test it, make sure it's doing it right. And then you'll kind of see what it does. So a lot of these that are just in the metallics will kind of disappear. Everywhere the effects are, those are gonna stay, right? But all the just where it's plain metallics, those will kind of dissipate and, and disappear. Um, so that's kind of the difference from this versus this side. So we'll let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll show you the difference between the two. So you guys can kind of see the, where all the just titanium metallics kind of settle down a little bit. They're not as selled out. Um, but here's the difference, right? This has been sitting for about 10 minutes and this didn't get hit. So depending on what look you're going for, if you wanted to keep this look, just miss the surface with the denatured alcohol and it's not gonna sell it out or create any of those crater looking spots in the epoxy. But I'm gonna just go through and hit the rest with this isopropyl. All right, so the last thing we want to do while this is evaporating um, before we missed it with the denatured alcohol is we want to make sure our edges are good. As you can see, we got a lot of run spots, right? Runs are never good on edges, so we're just going to hit these. Just run that roller. You can run the, a paintbrush over it. We just want to get rid of those drip, drip marks. So what I meant by spraying denatured is we like to spray denatured as a final step because that helps the, the surface of the epoxy kind of fizzle. It eliminates any bubbles or air that's trapped in the resin that might not evaporate. So that's, that's kind of why we like to finish off misting the surface. And again, misting it with denatured is not going to affect the look. And so we'll let this isopropyl evaporate off. We'll do a final mist coat, check our edges scrape our drips and then we'll let this board set up and then we'll go on to the next step tomorrow uh, which is putting the flag stencil down and then ghosting a color of spray paint over that um, but this is kind of the process and we'll use the other three quarts out of the gallon and a half kit after the flag's done to flood coat the whole thing to lock everything in